Hey, it's Lula, and we filmed another art talk, so please enjoy. Have you ever spent a long time looking at a single part of a room? Have you devoted yourself to intense contemplation of something that is usually unnoticed or may have no purpose? Many of us are so busy that we don't often look at our surroundings, or perhaps we feel that it would be time spent badly if we did. But this is what Gwen John, a British artist, did in a room she rented in Paris. I think that is what gives this painting such depth and emotion. Gwen studied art at the Slade School of Fine Art at the end of the 19th century. At the time, it was the only place in London where women could learn to paint. This self-portrait was painted not long after she left the Slade. I like the self-possessed look on her face, which seems to say that she knows who she is and what she wants to do. Her pose, with her hand on her hip and her elbow jutting out of the picture plane, also makes her look confident. I think that she was a woman who wanted to follow her own path and be free to make her own choices. In late 1904, she travelled to Paris with her friend Dorelia McNeil, where John found work as an artist model, mostly for women artists. Dorelia was having an affair with Gwen's brother and would later marry him. Gwen lived in a series of rooms in Montparnasse, the Bohemian quarters of Paris. She lived on the top floor of 87 Rue de Cherche-Midi between 1907 and 1909 and this room appears in lots of her paintings in this period. Gwen began modelling for the sculptor August Rodin and also became his lover. Rodin was at this time one of the most famous artists in Europe. Gwen was devoted to him for 10 years and wrote him thousands of letters, many of which were quite explicit. Gwen could become fiercely attached to people and Rodin eventually had to keep her at a distance. She wrote to him saying, I was a little solitaire. No one helped me or awoke me before I met you. Rodin and Gwen were not at all alike. She was small and quiet, and Rodin was bold and extravagant. He was known to prefer models that were older and larger than Gwen. She was lithe and athletic, able to hold unusual poses. However, she was also an artist herself, which was very unusual for models, and therefore she understood what Rodin needed. Under his influence, she learned to concentrate her powers of observation. Her affair with Rodin inspired her own paintings and gave her confidence to paint the way she wanted. Rodin was very kind to Gwen throughout their relationship. He was always worried that she didn't look after herself. When they first met, he dusted off a wicker chair and placed it in front of a large stove so that she could keep warm. There is a wicker chair in the painting of her room. Rodin had been commissioned by the International Society of London to create a memorial for the American painter John Abbott McNeil Whistler. Gwen had studied under Whistler at his school in Paris. Whistler conceived a painting as a logical discipline, claiming, I do not teach art. I teach the scientific application of paint and brushes. Whistler's approach was hugely influential on Gwen, and she set about to develop a methodical approach and an eye for technical detail. There is something apt about her posing for a memorial of an artist she admired and executed by an artist she loved. During her years in Paris, she met many leading artists, including Matisse, Picasso and Brancusi. But the new development in art had little effect on her approach to painting. I admire her passionate independence and her pursuit of her own artistic goals. Gwen often painted multiple versions of the same subject. She painted at least two versions of the interior of her room. There is another version of this painting in Sheffield, which has a book on the table instead of a bunch of flowers. Gwen clearly loved her room, and it appears in a number of her paintings, including this one of a woman reading a letter. The drawings on the wall of cats are also by her. This painting makes me think about tranquility and stillness, but I also feel that there is something stirring beneath the surface. What is this woman reading so intensely? And why is she standing up to read? Although this is a corner of a small apartment, Gwen has painted it with so much care, attention and love, as though she were painting a close friend. Gwen's art is concerned with subtle colour relationships. In this painting, she is using a wide range of closely related tones, which give it a slightly hazy and unreal feel. At this time, Gwen began working in thin layers, smoothly painting with fine brushes and finishing with transparent glazes. The room looks strangely odd, but at the same time full of inner emotions that are hard to describe. In these apparently serene works, she created an intense engagement with the interior. One of her sisters described how they felt the absorption of her personality as they sat. The humble space is made beautiful by the rich quality of light sparkling onto the tabletops and shining on the wall. It is the balance between the calm introspection and the intensity of presence that makes her work so enticing. In her diary, she wrote, my room is so delicious after a whole day outside. It seems to me that I am not myself, except in my room. We are seeing a moment captured in time. There are fresh flowers on the table, 
the window ajar, and the coat thrown over the wicker chair. Sunlight floods in from the open window, drawing the eye beyond the room into the world outside. The artist seems present, even though unseen. Gwen was very proud of her surroundings, writing, I must tell you what feeling of contentment my room gives me. I take my meals at the table in the window. In the evening, my room gives me quite the extraordinary feeling of pleasure. This is not the busy domestic room of a middle-class family, but a plain room, a working room for serious artists, as well as a living space. This is a quiet painting with no narrative and no hidden meanings. People have interpreted the objects in very different ways, but I think that it is their very mundane nature that gives them beauty. Gwen has taken her time to show her respect for the place she loved. Because she loved it, it is full of her and her personality. Her fierce independence and individuality, her passion for painting and life, and her determination that the world could be understood through observation and contemplation are all shown here.